All right. Joe, audio, we good? Give me a thumbs up in the background. Or bring okay, cool. Do that too. <laughs> He's like, I just want to be like one more time on camera. All right, yeah, <laughs> going back, bitches. Um, <laughs> It's time for Bourbon with Friends, the bourbon podcast that never takes itself too seriously. Pull up a chair, grab a glass, and remember, a bourbon with friends can change the world. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bourbon with Friends. Myself, Adrian, and Martin are here to talk about whiskeys from around the world and how a bourbon with friends can change the world. How was your guys' weekend? It was good. Great. Martin, I had a great weekend. I mean, that's great because Martin turned old. I turned old. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he turned old. Not I older. Old. Just, yeah. old. Just old. Just old. Yeah. Well, Friday night, it was, all three of we were together Friday night too, all three of us. Not yeah. physically in the flesh, but we were it felt like it, though. on the screen here. <laughs> yeah. It felt very much in the flesh. Yeah. So we yeah, we and, and for everybody out there, we uh, actually recorded a special episode, which I think is eventually gonna come out in some format. We'll let you guys know, of course, but it was a little special little celebration of my old so you're yeah. so old <laughs> i did wake up with a like with a very different kind of like neck cramp than you it was like i always have like some kind of like you know uh, but this was like this felt 41 so <laughs> it felt distinctively 41 <laughs> so yeah. um yeah yeah i was i was you know just kind of tired man so yeah how was your guys this weekend would you guys do anything cool tell me all about it Made yeah. the cocktails at the Edwin Co. I taught people how to shoot long distance. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. That sounds fun. Uh, this was um, at 500 to 1,200 yards we were going after. So see how they were doing. See if they could even hit it and have fun I was say, it. What kind of target do you put out there for that? Steel with lights. Steel. Cool. They hit it, lights up. Do you bring nice. Arlo? Of course. What's he do the whole time? Just stand there? Yeah. What a good dog. Franco wouldn't even go fucking near it. He would just, he would be like freaking out the whole time. Because <laughs> it's like fireworks. You know, like he doesn't even like fireworks. So that'd be like terrifying for him. <laughs> He'd just be sitting on Arlo's back like some sort of horse. <laughs> he just saved me, Arlo. Probably. Oh, man. But uh, I've got a question for you guys. As I dust off, I mean, I was eating almonds before we started, so now I got like sugar everywhere. Um, but what was your guys' favorite nostalgic cartoon? Like Ooh. the old school cartoons from back in the day. Oh, anything Looney Tunes. That's what we. That's what I watched growing up was Looney, Looney Tunes. Yeah, you like you like to see a, a little anvil fall on a on a you know well it was supposed to be for the uh, Roadrunner, but it ended up on the Coyote. So yeah, um, I mean, I I liked all of them. I liked, I mean. Brian? Uh, Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy was a good one. It was Ooh. arguably one there. way more for adults than oh, it was. 100%. For kids. <laughs> like, there was some <laughs> fucking weird stuff on that cartoon. Like, that was one of the. I, I watched an episode like a year ago, and I'm like, hey, let kids watch this. It's disturbing as hell. They would like focus in on like scabs, and there was like mentally ill people. It was very crazy. Oh. For the, for what the what like, like like what was your favorite? Let's go there. You want to know what mine was? Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a couple. Ren and Stimpy was definitely one. Doug was up there. I love Doug. Oh, I like um, Doug. Doug yeah. was great. Doug was great. Um, Rugrats definitely. I, I feel like I never really ended up finishing out like all of it because I think some of the other ones came out, and then um, I was really into a lot of like the superhero ones, you know, like X Men and uh, like Batman and uh, Bat like the Batman the animated series and like Spider Man and all those. But I also really, really, really like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why I'm bringing this up. <laughs> no, no, I know where you're going. <laughs> like, oh my god. There's a reason why I'm bringing this up because there was a really cool character that was in that named Casey Jones, which is the way that I segue this into our guest today, Cody Turner from Casey Jones. That's how you do a segue. <laughs> That's how you do a link. 
Come on. <laughs> I worked for that one. <laughs> God, that was fucking <laughs> Jesus. Cody, you don't need to well, applaud for that, but yeah. thank you. <laughs> I well, appreciate well, it. Well <laughs> goodness oh, gracious. Goodness you're going to have to bump up t-shirt sizes because you're going to break through that thing with that flex. Whoa, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Oh, you don't know him, sir. He's the size of a fucking toothpick. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is a medium. <laughs> this is a medium. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, and I shrunk it and I shrunk it to a small. So. Okay. Um hi Cody. How are you? Welcome, Cody. Man, I'm I'm excellent. I'm excellent. I'm like uh I just I feel blessed, not stressed, you know. Like that's where I'm at in my life. I um, love it. I love it. There you go. Can you can you share with everybody a little bit what your role is with Casey Jones for us real quick? Yeah, so uh, I came on as a partner uh, to the distillery uh, almost three years ago now. And so, you know, with uh, many small businesses in Americana, it's like my role is a little bit of everything. I think maybe on paper, it's mostly uh, marketing, uh, outside sales, manufacturing sales. Uh, I do all the content creation, uh, all the design work, emails, oh, nice. social video work, photography, you name it. And, um, you know, put the uh, business owner cap on too and help with all the other high level leadership team functions that I need to. So, hey, man. multi hyphenate over here, man. I know. I was going to say, you're doing a lot, man. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know, awesome. Uh, I, I had a guest just the other day ask me, um, you know, do you, do you enjoy it? And, uh, I totally stole this. So um, let me just say that out loud first. But it's allowed. Uh, there's a great, there's a great uh, uh, Tim Cook Apple sent this memo out to his employees, and the memo goes something like, um, "All my life, I've heard that uh, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life." And uh, he said, "At Apple, I've found that to be completely untrue. You'll work harder at this than anything you've ever." struggled with uh, throughout your career. Uh, he said, but the tools will fill light in hand. Hmm. I like that. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. I've not heard that. I, I was going to say, really I remember cool. the first one. I remember that. I remember the first part. I remember hearing that because I, you know, that's kind of the aim for everybody, right? Is if you love yeah. what you're doing, you don't feel like you're working. So I love that though. Shout out to Tim Cook. Yeah, that's, uh, um, that's uh, you know, as they say, chef's kiss. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, though. I mean, that is really good. I like that. Um, I was looking into you guys and stalker. Yeah, I like, stalker. Um, <laughs> I was watching you guys from afar. Um, but so what I found really, and I'm when we'll get into some nerdy stuff later on in the yeah. podcast, but like um uh, like we usually have we'll talk a little bit about the equipment, but like what I found really interesting was the kind of history with the still making with Casey Jones. Yeah. Um, I, I love stuff like that. And, and I just thought like some of like the, just like the history behind it and really how it all started was very fascinating. I was hopefully that you could kind of educate some of our listeners who may not be so privy to this information. Yeah. I mean, I think if, uh, you'll give me a, a bit of a branch to get out on first, I, I, it's really important. Anytime, uh, I get a chance to interface with, uh, creatives, uh, anybody who's in this space on your all side of the camera that is, is, a small supplier, uh, somebody who does a lot of content creation work. I can't tell you, thank you enough uh, for the huge investment that you all make uh, in producing your content and uh, sharing your experience and uh, your journey with everybody who follows you. And uh, I think that if you're not on that side of the camera and you're not the one doing that work, it looks sort of one way. But the reality of you all have your own nine to fives and um, I just know you're busting your ass to make this happen. Um, so it's just uh, I'm, I'm very humbled anytime I'm asked. To, Thank uh, you, Cody. Hey, thanks, man. That's awesome. Appreciate that. What they said. <laughs> <laughs> really, so, truly. For real, though, like honestly, that, yeah, that's really a hundred percent. That's really cool. No, I mean, you know, keep keep grinding, right? Like that's what it is. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So uh, a little bit about uh, Casey and the history. So we're, you know, we're, I, I don't, I mean, I don't want to use the word famously, but trying to be famously known for uh, having these really unique square pot stills. 
And of course, anytime you've seen a still before, it's round in shape. You've got a traditional pot that literally looks like a giant pot. And then column stills, of course, which are round as well. So uh, square pot stills are really unique to Casey Jones' story and to the namesake Casey himself. So kind of the story behind that peculiar design, that shape, is that Casey was actually a coffin builder by trade as a young man. Yep. And, uh, you know, during Prohibition, he was actually challenged to make a still. Um, and his uh, prowess in uh, coffin building actually informed the design. And uh, the guy was illiterate. He couldn't read, couldn't write, but he was just an engineering savant. And so uh, the first still he ever saw was the first one he made. Yeah, I love that. That's insane. Mind blowing, you know? I mean, the, the talent to be able to do something like that. I mean, this is, this is not, you know, no CAD. There's no, <laughs> right. Right. Down on the engineering right. sheets. Yeah. Like, it's just like, just right here, you know? Yeah. So uh, he built a square pot still, and it had a lot of advantages uh, versus uh, the round ones that were the traditional stills at the time. Primarily, um, that square still would spread that surface area that you were using uh, to heat, spread it out. And I'm sure you've cooked on a square griddle before. You know, you're up in the morning, eating your breaky, you know, having some eggs and toast and you're, you know, you're those big square ones. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I have one. I have one. Even the heat distribution thing going on. And so that was one of these really big advantages of the still is that it, it really spread the heat distribution out. And you need to think about the volume, the liquid volume, right? Certainly if you have a column, it's a, you know, big circle, yay high of liquid volume. Traditional pot still, it's like you're increasing that diameter and you're decreasing the depth. But the square pot still, it's like you're really spreading that out like a nice big cookie sheet, you know. And and Mama wants some good cookies, so it's mm. like really <laughs> she spreads does. It out. She does. <laughs> and that you know again reduces the depth down uh, of the actual liquid volume, which evenly dissipated the heat. Now, some other advantages to it: the unique shape was actually designed to fit in the back of a Model A pickup truck for very obvious reasons. And so it literally would sit in the back of a pickup truck. And because it was so wide and, you know, rectangular versus this tall, you know, cylinder sort of shape, it would actually be so low profile that you could throw a tarp over the back of the pickup truck and drive around sort of incognito. Uh, nobody really knew that you had to steal with you, which is uh, very advantageous when those activities were illicit. So yeah. uh, the still itself also actually broke down very easily. You'll probably see on our website, um, there's pictures of the uh, old still that uh, AJ made and it, it has handles on it. You know, it's like on either side, you can literally just pick up uh, the line arm comes right off to take the condenser right off, just comes in three pieces. So if we wanted to go out to the woods and make shine. I mean, Strap, you know, the line arm on your back. Yep. You take the condenser, one hand on the the still, and there we go. Off into the woods, we're making shine. Isn't it? Isn't it wild that like some of the design choices had to be for that specifically? Like, how do we get this out quick? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 if somebody came by, <laughs> like, how could we get this into like a? I mean, that's like when you think about like Scotch distilling things like that. When they're in in Scotland, they were built near glens that's why a lot of them are called glens so and so glens this and that because they were built there because they could take all that stuff and hide it in that valley um so if people are coming around they'd be like well there's no illicit things going on here so yeah. i think that's so cool that like the design function was not just the actual function but like how oh, do we get this thing the fuck out of here before someone finds it <laughs> i think that's so cool it's so cool I don't, I don't want to nerd it out too much about no, this. No, please. Another piece of this that we just really don't talk about very often, but uh, Casey actually, I mean, kind of pioneered in the area <clears throat> a very different condenser style. So when you think like old still, you're thinking that old dumper style still with a 53 gallon wooden, you know, oak barrel that's watertight that they ran the worm down, which all, you know, the distillate, uh, the, condensate runs into and they keep cold water into that barrel that condenses that vapor into liquid again and that's typically what you think of when you think of an old still mm -hmm. ac actually made a double walled copper uh condenser just like the ones that are used today 
uh, again, just out of his own gray matter a uh, hundred years ago. So That's fucking weird. nuts. Yeah. That is insane. Are there any left from that? Because I, I saw something else that they they took pride in bashing the shit out of them after like they like to to kind of I, I'm assuming kind of like let's destroy this so nobody else can get this design. Are there any that are left? Every once in a blue moon, somebody will like we actually had somebody come to us, or I want to say like a little over 14 months ago, and they stumbled on an old Casey still wow. that was uh, still somewhat intact. That's history, really? man. That's history, man. But the one that the best version of it, though, is the one that we actually have. So and that's actually how the story start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really interesting tale. But, um, you know, Casey built hundreds of these things in the land between the rivers area, which is about 45 minutes west of the story. Of course, it's not rivers anymore. It's all been dammed up for hydropower. But uh, he made hundreds of these things in the valleys and uh, people were bootlegging and moonshining because, you know, it's prohibition. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you wanted to make some money, that's <laughs> kind of yeah. so, You were having some difficulties with that for a second, trying to figure out the right wording. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're still in prohibition. He's like, just in case anyone's There's listening. No, <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> you know, in here. Yeah. So uh, he made hundreds of these things in that area. And, um, you know, it's, it's it's not really different than the the hills and valleys of eastern Kentucky and eastern Tennessee. It's just sort of the inverse. It's all just valleys over here, right? So yeah. um, he makes hundreds of these things. And, of course, they're all square. And so if you're a revenuer at the time, it's you didn't have to have, you know, Sherlock next to you to figure out, oh, it's a square still. I wonder who made this. And so uh, his <laughs> blessing also ended up being his curse, and he got busted for it twice. Um, sent off to Mill Point Penitentiary, uh, and uh, his second time in there, uh, they basically told him, "Like, look, get caught at this again, and it's life. Like, you're done. Like, you're not getting out." So uh, he decides to hang up his head. Mm. Years and years later, uh, the TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority, and the uh, federal government decided to dam up those rivers and turn them into hydropower. And of course, it displaces everybody that lives in, that, in those, those valleys. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rumor is that there are hundreds of Casey stills at the bottom of the lakes now. But the moonshining was such a big part of the history in that area that uh, the forestry department, who was managing the uh, land, they decided to put in a gift uh, visitor center, a gift shop, sort of at the head of uh, the rivers now the lakes and in the shop they erected a still and casey's like i mean you can go to chat gpt and ask about the guy it's like he's a legend so casey's a legend of you know like the grandfather moonshining in western kentucky and so they decided to put his name on the still well he he happens upon it one day and he sees the still that he didn't make put his name on it and uh to say that that didn't settle with him very well and to put it lightly mm. Poor Casey. Right. well you know, how rude i, know I would be born. mad <laughs> i would be ticked off i didn't go to prison twice for this i mean <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> certainly not going to life for this guy <laughs> so uh he basically gives him an ultimatum it's like you either take my name off of it or you're going to commission me to make a still it's like here's the deal you know i'm not going to have my name on some piece of junk that i didn't make and uh, really proud of his work and totally understand it. So they come to an agreement and the uh, forestry department actually commissions Casey to build a still for the visitor center. Now, I don't know everybody's story, don't presume to, but I think this might actually be the only federally commissioned still ever made. Right. Mm. So there it goes into the visitor wow. center. And it's you there. You have me curious now. Yeah. Google. Yeah. Google. Google. I'm, curious. Yo, I'm curious. Joe, Google it. So Sorry. there the still sits that Casey mm. built is only legally made still for years and years and years and years and years, right? So the founders, Peg Hayes, Arlen Casey Jones, Arlen is Casey's grandson, right? They're aware of this still sitting in there for years and years and years. Uh, one day, uh, say it was like 14 years ago, Peg drives by the visitor center and the still's just gone. Just poof, finished. So, as you might imagine, here's this one link to Casey's grandfather, 
it's missing. So they kind of get into uh, this, we got to find this thing mode, start asking around, conversations, phone calls, letters, correspondence, et cetera, which culminates all the way up to talking to the head of the U.S. Forestry Department. One day, rings up, Peg answers the phone, and it's literally the head of the Forestry Department. The guy's like, look, this is Casey's still. AJ is clearly Casey's grandson. If you guys want the still, you can come get it. You can have it back. Yeah. Holy hey. shit. <laughs> so... What I understand is the traditionally 45 minute drive turned into a less than 45 minute drive. By <laughs> mm -hmm. As it should. <laughs> Don't blink. They might take it back, right? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> sure enough, they run up there and there the still was in a visitor center and in, in, in the at the visitor center in a storage container. And so what they were doing is they were remodeling and they were going to put a smaller sort of like model version of it in there. And so sure enough, they hand the still over. Peg and AJ bring it back to their then homestead uh, on Woody Lane in Hopkinsville. And then what do you do when you have your grandfather's only legally made still? You distill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, That's a solid so, guess, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even the blonde knew the answer to that one. Yeah, I mean, come hey, on. Good, there's man. two of us. That is true. Oh, wow. That is true. You're the smarter one. So sure enough, he starts messing with it. He gets it operating, and it's it's a showpiece. It's not really designed to produce uh, volume off of, but it works. And I have heard that Peg sees one too many vehicles leaving their garage one too many times at night. I, this is what I've heard. I can't neither confirm or deny. Uh, but basically, <laughs> Peg says, "Listen, you either get a DSP or shut this thing down. Like those are your choices." And uh, Peg was decided, suspicious. Yeah, right. Peg so decided, sounds like a boss, is what she. Yeah, yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Peg like is a Peg. Peg is a boss. I like Peg a lot. Yeah. So uh, she gives them the ultimatum. They talk about it, and they decide they're going to do the DSP. And so AJ actually used his grandfather's only legally made still to make his own 140 gallon square pot still, and that's the one that you see most of the pictures of on the website today. Um, ran with that for the first actual eight years of our operation. And uh, March of 23, we put online, we finally retired it. It got us where we're at. March 23, we put online a new thousand gallon traditional pot still with a lean arm, four plate condenser, deflagmenter, and uh, a uh, condenser to the right of that. But then adjacent to it, we had a 200 gallon square pot custom still made for us called the Grandfather. Uh, to pay uh, homage. Cool. That's so cool. Well, I'm so yeah, glad. I know. I, I'm that so, story, I had so enjoyed that whole story. I'm <laughs> so glad I asked that question. <laughs> that so, just expanded into it, that's, most of the podcast. Which yeah, is honestly, be that's, <laughs> that's so good, man. That was yeah. great. Because I love, I love it. Um, I think that the one thing, and and you sort of said it at the beginning, like when you're when you were um keeping praise on us uh but like <laughs> like what's uh i do like when i do like when people do get educated on those kind of things so i feel like they don't they don't people don't always understand like the history behind something like how a distillery came to be or how a certain thing came to be or the inspiration behind things and i think that those stories are what make distilleries no i mean um, you're spot on the whole industry is actually it's fascinating if you do some of the uh traditional you know heritage branch uh yeah. tours you find out that it's like there were like 12 families back yeah. in the day that made all of this happen Yeah. Uh, when it comes to Kentucky bourbon. And it's just it's fascinating, the history. So crazy. And that's just like one small part. I mean, you think about like world whiskey, you like think of like how like all these different things are influenced by other people. <laughs> but then there's like these core stories of things like that that I think are just fascinating. So th honestly, thank you, dude. Like that was way more than I expected from that from that answer. So I really love that so much. man. I really appreciate it. That makes my question look like a bitch. Um, <laughs> you want to ask, ask it real quick? Well, I'm going to have to <laughs> anyways. Um, with everything that you guys are doing, we tr talked to, it sounds like a good friend of yours, George, recently. Klitsikes. 
Yeah, I'm oh, yeah, never yeah. going to get his name right, ever. I'm the only one that can get it right out of this entire group. So. That's true. Um, <laughs> that's true. That doesn't fucking matter to me. Uh, he's a great guy. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's talking about. But with his experience and that what he has going on, Kentucky can Boy. you kind of talk about your MASH Makers experience? For people yeah, that are coming in, th this, yeah, oh, that one, yeah, oh. yep, that. Well, aren't you fancy? Merch, like baby. Like that. <laughs> so, link to uh, the bio. That, that's good. Sure. Dude. These <laughs> these <laughs> these questions and links are working out tonight. Dude. <laughs> I'm sure you're all aware that uh, you know the the I would say like the tourism side of bourbon spirits in general, it's maturing, right? I mean, you've got a huge influx of people who are interested in the space. And um, as a consequence, it's like, you need to see some innovation in that space. Uh, there needs to be something new, novel, something that uh, really hasn't been done as far as ex yeah. the experiential side of the uh, distillery sort of experience. It's like, what, what, what can you get involved in? What can you do beyond the 51% corn tour, which is what we all talk about internally to refer to as a standard tour. Um, we, because of the story in, in our history and the legend of Casey, we have a really engaging, fantastic tour experience. It's like, I, I'm, I'm just going to say like best in class staff, who I'm uh, immensely proud of. Um, they just absolutely worked their tails off to, to really deliver a great experience for guests. And we treat like family the moment you come up. But just having the tour piece where it's like, okay, the story's great, it's phenomenal, it's fascinating, but you get into, well, this is our still and this is what Kentucky bourbon is. And, and it's a great experience for people kind of new to the space. We wanted to do something that was a little above and beyond that, something that's a little more in depth and uh, somewhere between, you know, new to it and kind of intermediate. I want to learn a little bit more about the process. I want to be involved in it a bit more. And so I uh, came up with um, a few ideas and settled on this idea of doing Mashmaker. And so Mashmaker is uh, this great experience that doesn't take a whole lot of time. It's like, you know, about 15, 20 minutes, but you'll come into our original still room where we literally made mash for eight years and we'll have in there uh, a setup and one of our staff will guide you through really the ins and outs of the actual grains from a categorical standpoint, rye, wheat, malted barley, and corn. And from every aspect, what does rye do to, um, the fermentation. What's the effect of rye in the cook? What's the effect of rye in the distillate? What's the effect of rye in the actual aging process? And what do you end up with with rye in the glass? It's like from grain to glass of each grain and its impact in the final product from start to finish. So you get this educational piece, which is really cool. But then to take it to the hands on part, it's like, well, we're going to have everybody pick three grains. They're choosing, scoop them up, walk over to our actual, right there, it's our original mill that we used forever, and you're going to get your grind on. You're going to grind the grains, you're going to dump them into one of two receptacles, and you're going to help influence a unique mash bill every month at Casey Jones' store. Well, crazy. I have I wanna, I wanna so it. many more questions based off your education it. and everything that you just said just um, for that. It. Yeah. Yeah. it sounds you're giving, really interesting. Go ahead, Brian. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. It's uh, giving the, that experience to an individual that doesn't have the knowledge of the maturation process or the yeast strains or the ability to differentiate between a rye, a, a weeded, a bourbon, Right. how it's differentiated between those and you're giving somebody the knowledge basis to start their experience in the right way and their education in the right way into whiskey itself not just bourbon so that's amazing 
that's a huge insight there that where we like to aim at is uh, one of our core values is uh, authenticity. And so, you know, anywhere that you can unpack and demystify and help consumers sort of upgrade themselves, I think it's just a big win for the industry and um, it builds trust, uh, which is critical. And, you know, I, when you're uninitiated and you walk into the bourbon aisle, Jesus H. It's crazy, it's, man. It's just it's crazy. Overwhelming. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it's almost laughable. There's so many of um, our colleagues that um, I think it's probably just an effect of what was. And it's, you know, this is well, we rest, this will change. But it's like people are really picky about their mash bills. Like they don't want to mm -hmm. disclose that information. And it's like. Wow. That is so laughably low resolution. I'm going to tell you exactly what the mash bills. I'll tell you what yeast strain we use. I don't care. Have at it. You know, I mean, it's yeah. like, there's just so much more to it. Uh, and a way that I like to explain that, that I think really summarizes it well is that there is definitely a science to the magic of spirit making, yeah. but so much of it is still art. Yeah. yeah. Well, all of it's hard. What I yeah. uh what I wanted to ask real quick, Martin. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So you were talking about distill so you're distilling each grain in that experience. So you would have just corn distilled, rye distilled. Maybe I'm not asking it I'm, uh, I'm gonna properly. This because eventually we might we might yeah. Oh. For now, yeah, yeah. For now, it's like we're building Seeking a map. Insider out of the contributed ingredients and so we're you know take tear weights on the actual vessels that we pour the grain in and then work backwards to say well it's this much percent rye this much percent wheat this percent malt this much corn the and only then, reason i ask that not to i'm sorry to interrupt you is because for someone like myself who has yeah. not tried this exorbitant amount of uh, bourbons or whiskeys i would love to be able to say you know to really get that, this is a rye flavor. This is a corn yeah. flavor. This is a wheat flavor. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's uh, there. We'll, we'll we'll get there. I think that uh, for now, it's like you know, you walk in and we're gonna unpack, start to finish. You know, rye brings spice. You know, spice to the table. Why? Uh, malt is uh, nuttiness, and uh, you know, obviously, malty flavors. Why? It's like, well. Why do all, almost all bourbons have malt? Well, mm. here's why. You know, it's like we're trying to break all of that down and then come up with some really unique mash bills as a consequence that people are actually are involved in, which is really cool. And then, you know, uh, we're about to distill our first batch for mash makers. So we started that in September. So we stopped collecting September's batch at the end of the month. And uh, came up with a mash bill, posted on Facebook, and uh, we're about to announce uh, on email as soon as I get to it <laughs> uh, what the mash bill is and uh, that we're going to distill that uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, actually. Well, do you want to announce it on here since yeah. this will come out in this two will, weeks? Yeah, this will be after. <laughs> I, I don't remember it off the top of my head. It's a, it's a really unique bill, though. It's, it's 51 corn. I want to say 24 24, 12, and uh, it's it's a low corn, really interesting mix of uh, malt and rye with lower lower rye, higher wheat. It's it's an interesting bill. Yeah, but I, I can look it up on the phone here in just a minute if we want to for sure. But uh, we're 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 gonna get it probably like two and a quarter barrels worth of product off of this one run. That's so, that's awesome. Nice. We're, we're going to definitely barrel two casks of it, and that's going to go up for future, right? Probably at least four years before we release it. Yeah. But then the unaged uh, remnant that we have in excess of two barrels, we're actually going to bottle that, um, which will be fantastic. We're going to do a white dog whiskey. And uh, at the gift shop, you'll be able to purchase uh, September's run. It's going to be labeled, you know, with the batch name on it, uh, 2024 September with the mash bill on it. And uh, we're going to be selling alongside that. I'm sure you've seen these aging screws. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you can, you don't have to wait forever because as it turns out, if you use an aging screw, it takes a fraction of the time mm -hmm. to actually get some 
not all of the flavor that a barrel would give, obviously, but some intimation of what it would taste like. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to shut up because that's amazing. Adrian, I have, a, I have a question for you. Okay. When you said, when you, when you were asking about that experience, you named rye, you named wheat, and you named corn. I noticed that you left off barley. And I know because you don't like <laughs> American. I know that. So, so Cody, I'm going to give you a little insight real quick. Dude. Um, Oops. So she is not a fan of American or single malt. Let's just say not that. Not a fan of single malt. We've been, I've been trying, we've been trying very hard. That's funny. Uh, like, I didn't even, against, I didn't even do that on purpose. Up against a fucking brick wall, dude. <laughs> like, like, it's just like we, we've been trying, you know what I mean? Like to get her into, to think we've been, we eased her in with American single malt. So we tried with scotch, but it's just not happening. So I like that you conveniently left out barley on that. <laughs> I was just making an observation. Should we try some of these whiskeys? Kind of yeah, like how you're changing subject. <laughs> no, That's like, a good uh, segment. Uh, so I, I was close. It's yeah, yeah. 51. Okay. Uh, it's uh, 51 uh, corn, uh, 24 wheat, 13 rye, and 12 malted barley. Nice. That's awesome. Be a really, really interesting mash bill. Hey, well, that's that really interesting. Time. And if, if you want, we, we'll put it in the description. It'll be posted up later on. That way we can have fun with it and say, hey, if you don't try this, you're kind of. I can't always do what I want to do because we'll get you're kicked crazy. off. Yeah. If you don't try this, you're <laughs> crazy. You say. That's what you say. Yeah. But, well, that, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. So, yeah, um, we, can, we can do it. So, what do you guys want to do first? Can I, I have all three? Suggest, what do you suggest we try first, Cody? So I sent you all three of um, our probably most popular products. And um, the first one I definitely want to recommend suggesting that we try is uh, unique to us in a very special way. So the blue label uh, double barrel cut is really where we ought to start. Okay. Got it. I, I so, think that's the one I'm going to like the most. Yeah. This is a, a really unique product that I think we're the only distillery in the world that makes, which is fun to have those kind of bragging rights, if you will. Yeah, I but will maybe... share a fun fact with you. So I work for a distillery um, here in Indiana that also has cane sugar in the mash bill, but it's yeah. not, it's not um, double barrel. This is double barrel, right? Holy shit. Yeah. I'm going to shut up and let you talk, but damn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, Sorry, it's, I keep interrupting you. I apologize. No, no, you're <laughs> fine. This is bourbon with friends. So like, right? We This friends, our friends chat. Friends. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when we first started, we didn't have that thing called dad's money. And uh, mm. when you don't have <laughs> that thing called dad's money, you have to start by making clear spirits that are mm -hmm. unaged. Mm -hmm. So we started with uh, the Casey Authentic Moonshine recipe, which is actually a mix of 50 corn and 50 cane sugar. Now, the corn is not finely milled. It's actually milled up almost to the consistency of uh, the chicken feed. So it's really roughly milled. So there's a lot of oil in it, and it's not, not way broken down so that your yeast can start eating the starches in that. So it's like a very mild flavor in the process. And then the rest of it, of course, is 50% pure cane sugar. So um, we start making clear moonshine. Casey's cut first. It's a 92 proof, uh, which is a fun story about that. Um, but then AJ has this sort of innovation. He's like, look, if Casey had a barrel, he'd be barreling his moonshine. So he started barreling this corn and cane distillate. That is not so unique then i mean there's probably like a handful of distilleries barrel aging moonshine um but then the next piece of it double barreling i don't think anybody else is doing so what you have here is about three-ish four years old in a single uh american oak heavy char medium toast cask from kelvin cooperage okay and then we'll dump that out of that barrel and then put it into one of our high rye bourbon casks to finish it for another about year before we pull nice. it out a double barrel cut. This now, is lovely. This is very oh, good. The uh, It is actually very good, I will say. The corn 
uh, distillate, of course, you know, corn makes corn whiskey. And then the cane sugar distillate, that's rum. It is rum. Yeah. It so rum. it's like corn whiskey and rum at the same time. And then I'm here for this. So are you, so a, are you a rum drinker? I, I love a really good uh, sort of vanilla Ford, nice barrel aged rum. Yeah, I do. So isn't that a, isn't this when you, is, I don't, okay. Let me just stop myself. I'm too excited about this. Get excited. So I know the cane sugar portion. I know with the distillery that I work for, it's um, a prohibition era style recipe. Is the cane sugar the part of the recipe that makes it? The prohibition era i mean is that what this you would consider the recipe of this so this was this was casey's original recipe so i mean that this was yeah you know, yes holy sh this is this is it so it's pretty fun, it's pretty fun good. And I, you know i i'm pure purely speculating purely yeah. speculating but if you were okay. making shine back in the day and you bottled up a bunch of corn but didn't have a farm mm -hmm. somebody might Raise an eyebrow. Yeah. But they if you would half and half. But if you bought sugar, you were good. I get it. Ah, that's so cool. And, okay. And the yeast, as it turns out, they love sugar. So if you want really fast fermentations, you need sugar. So yeah. Right. Awesome. I can tell you right off the nose, I'm getting orange liqueur, like mm. a blueberry crumble, and almost like on the very back end, just off the nose, this is like a vanilla creme brulee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like burnt, like burnt. Yeah, a little but toasted. not hey, toasted, not burnt. Toasted, toasted, lightly toasted. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, had the distinct honor. I do uh, all the outside sales except for Kentucky. I've got a, a great Kentucky sales rep that we hired uh, internally. She does a fantastic job. But uh, I was doing a tasting down in Chattanooga, and uh, I had a lady um, taste what we're having here. And she, you know how sometimes somebody drops the note? Yeah. I, I know what you're about like, to say. Oh, yep, that's it. Like, I, that's the note. So I'm going to put this out there. And hopefully it's not, you know, Inception. Great movie. But hopefully it's great not movie. Inception. <laughs> she said, this smells and tastes like kettle corn. I can kind of see that. Like on, on the palate, on the very back end of the palate. I get kettle corn yeah. on the front end. It's almost, I want to say like, a, it's not fruity pebbles. It's a kind of a unique mixture of fresh fruits, a warm grain. And I can't figure out what type of grain I'm actually pulling out of because of the sugar cane. Yeah. Yeah. But at the very back end, I can taste that kettle corn. It's like oatmeal. Yeah, there's a yeah. It's like a nice sweet. It's like a sugary it, oatmeal, like an apple cinnamon yeah, oatmeal. I agree with Mark. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the finish is really nice too. It's, it's not overpowering, good. and it just kind of stays a little bit. And it's very. I really, I really like this. So I appreciate you, sir. Will anyway. make me drunk just off of this bottle <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. tonight. We're, get, uh, we're, getting, we're getting we're getting sugar high as fuck tonight. <laughs> Check yeah, my glucose level in the morning. Jesus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we've... It's really fascinating. So the, the single barrel age version of this, the single barrel cut, um, it's predominantly corn whiskey. It's okay. a version of it. So it does, it's not so super corn forward. It is. It does have, obviously, a tremendous amount of corn to it, but it's not. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've had corn whiskey before. It's like, course, yeah. hello, corn flakes. Yeah, corn. It's just it's literally just it's corn beating oh. you over the head with a corn hammer. Like that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now and now I'm so like I'm like I can't get it out of my head now. The kettle corn note, Brian. Yeah. Like it's just like I can't get it out of my head. But it's so good because I think that's a that's like a when popcorn was invented by Orville Redenbacher, he invented it, right? Um, but like uh, I'm just joking. <laughs> like, like, uh, I'm not so sure about that. One. <laughs> That's not a fact. But like, Cody, no, but like we replace you with him. <laughs> he says um, it every. Yeah, he says it every episode. He says it every episode. Um, so, but like, but for real, like, actually, I do get that note now because I feel like it's kind of an. I feel like kettle corn can be a very divisive note yeah, when it comes yeah. to whiskey. Um, because people, not everybody likes kettle corn. I do, 
But now that you said that, that's all I can get. Like I cannot even. It's so good. It's very good. But the rum notes are starting to come in. I'm a um. I recently got into to rum in the last like I don't know six or seven months. But like I gravitated to where the weird shit, like the yeah, yeah. the super high estery, just like funky, funky weird. Rum. Yeah, like the. Yeah. Like Old banana, kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> old banana, like, like, like old bananas. <laughs> we all love old bananas, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Martin's birthday, yeah, um, so, yeah that, was <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun birthday. <laughs> but no, all right, um, uh, moving on to the next sample, maybe. Oh, yeah, oh, so yeah, yeah, think, yeah. Uh, like I was saying, the single barrel version of this, it's basically corn whiskey, but it's like. Butterscotch, vanilla, caramel. It's the sweet, right? Yeah. But when you put it in that used barrel, it's like all the rum notes come out of nowhere, which is fascinating. Yeah, just from that second barreling. This one. So which so one are we doing? Here. Here. Uh, Single barrel. I'm torn. So we'll. we'll I have them. I have them both poured. You pick. Yeah, you just tell us which one we're let's, drinking, let's and we'll drink it. Let's. What do you think? Let's let's oh I'm so torn. Let's finish with the single barrel. Okay. I think that's, I think yeah. that's so okay. we're, gonna go, we're gonna go right right higher right territory and then we're gonna come out of it into wheat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're we'll, right. the black label. Well, but we're going we're going in proof order, it would appear. So that's cool. Yeah. We're at this one. So small batch next. Small batch. Yeah. Small batch next. Yeah, Martin already has half his bottle drank. Yeah. Shock surprise! It's it's very good. I will say that I've been I've been enjoying it. Um, this was my birthday pour. Oh, fantastic! Um, yeah. yeah, when he's but. saying birthday pour, he means half the bottle. Pours. <laughs> I, I just opened these like two hours ago. <laughs> I like to dive in and explore. I know. And I know. And see what's Adri happening. Adrian and I wait until the podcast. Martin just starts chugging. I just start um, chugging. God, that's so it. unique. This smells smoky to me on the nose. It, Should it? Um, no. I, I, I don't get that, but like that's interesting that you do. Have you been trying too many single malts lately? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I just I'm horrible with notes and all of that. I'm just no, she is I'm not, not. She's amazing good at all by the way. Yeah, so she's amazing, if, by the way. If you've ever had the distinct pleasure of having anything from Brown Foreman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They will have wood for Jack, right? Yeah, the rye in any of those bills manifests as a particular scent and flavor, and that's banana. It's yep. Like, and once you get it, like you just, it's there, right? Uh, Woodford's that candied banana. Uh, uh, Jack has a bit of that going on as well. Yeah. Um, our rye in this bill has done the same thing, but it is not candied banana. It's more banana nut bread. Uh, mm. Nuttiness is really prominent, and uh, the rice spice is much more prominent than some of the brown former products that we talked about. So I'm actually yeah, getting I dragon do. fruit out of this. Dragon it does have a bit fruit. of a fruity yeah. kind of. I mean, now that that I'm oh. swirling it, you're pulling those esoteric fucking fruits out of the thing, dude. <laughs> the fruits yeah, that nobody, yeah. the fruits that people like don't look at in the grocery store. Brian's like, that's that one, dude. Well, like, I've been like gooseberry a lot dude. more. Yeah, you've been looking so, at those dragon fruits. There's fine. Um, no, but I do agree. There is a fruity note that I can't quite place uh, the, the, the finger on right now, but it's very it has good. Has a lot, has less barley. It's 80, 16, and four. Yeah. That's, that's, so why, she that's my, why she likes is, it. This is that's my speed. <laughs> oh, Cody, one day, dude, we'll get her into it. Dude, it's just like, it's just an uphill battle, man. Now, to be fair, to 2072. Be fair, there, yeah. there are a few that I have tried that were. It's not Pretty cold at all, man. Calm down. Uh, look like that dog, dude. Hey, I love that dog so much, you man. Stop it. The bet there is there is no better like podcast interruptions than a fucking dog. Like that's like like, they're like that's, that's hey. fine. <laughs> like, I mean, the just it's UPS. He's gone. Calm down. Oh, they don't like UPS drivers, dude. He loves the UPS driver. He gives him food. He does. I would yeah, have food, dog treats. I would have for food. I would have food for dogs if I was delivering anything anywhere. That's pretty cool. He's a period. He's also the size of a small horse, so you better give him a treat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Frank exactly like, my yeah. point. Frank, Frank just barks at him like he's angry. You know what I mean? 
He's also, he's also but this old. Cody, this is absolutely well, phenomenal. I'm trying to pull out some more notes off of this, just yeah. off the nose alone. Like literally like, off the nose. I want to go to Google Maps and be like, "Hey, <clears throat> how far is Casey Jones?" <laughs> a lot closer than me, but I will be yeah. out there shortly because, well, after certain things happen, but yeah. I will be out there because we're opening up. I I run a whiskey company as well, so no, I'm no, just going to go off of that and just shut my mouth after that because this is all about you and not not about who not we about are. You. No, fuck no. It's never about well, me. If you, if anybody wants to visit, I'll, I will warn you, we will treat you like family, but it's okay. the family you like. So it's. Oh, I like oh, those good. That's good. good. Oh, good. thank God. Because there's some family members right now, dude. That Martin I just... <laughs> and I are in different parts of Indiana, but probably about the same distance away from you, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Because north south, mm -hmm. we're probably about the same uh, time frame away. About, about what do you say, time. Martin? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, we're both probably, you know, I, I'm about three and a half hours from Louisville, so I don't know. Yeah. I love how you say Louisville, Louisville dude. Louisville, Louisville. Louisville. I'm never gonna, I'm, ne I'm never gonna get over it, man. I just love how you say it. But I um, said everybody that lives there appreciates the way that. Is. Cody, are you, uh, Cody, are you a cigar smoker? I am not. Uh, okay. Not, I have a big up. The only reason why I asked this is because I had this one for the first time with a cigar and there are very few I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm only at like a, just about a year into smoking cigars. So I'm not like I'm learning like the things to pair it with. Yeah. And our, uh, our producer Joe's in the background, um, doesn't necessarily like pairing them with whiskey. He does for certain things, but like he, I, I, I'm starting to understand why and like why he says the things that he says, but I will say that this one, went very well with a cigar the other night we like, have had a lot well. to say that actually that this one pairs really well for with cigars for some reason but I, nice. I've, I've never experienced it yeah yeah it's very good like i don't know what it is i, I have no idea like i'm still trying to figure out my notes yeah still trying to figure out my like my crossovers when it comes to cigars and whiskey but um yeah this one like the cigar enhances the whiskey or the whiskey enhances the cigar or is it like mutually exactly it's exactly. a mutual pairing i'm cool. sure it has to be yeah. yeah, I mean, when it comes to this one, I'm going to say it's mutual pairing. But before we get too far off topic, I know Adrian has a few questions because Martin always likes to talk. So we're, we're going to shut him up and just move on to the one that's attractive in this podcast. <laughs> Arlo, come here. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Jeez. Well, I was joking. Wow. Come on. I just love dogs, dude. Um, so we were talking about that matchmakers experience and, uh, you know, we had an interview about the the Kentucky Bourbon Retreat mm -hmm. a few episodes back. Can you? So, is that how would that be different than the Mashmaker experience? For people? Yeah. So, you know, for the Mashmaker experience, you're coming in. It's a, it's a crowdsourced bourbon mash bill, so you're helping influence it. But if you are doing the Bourbon Retreat with George's group, like that is your personal bespoke mash bill that we would help you develop. Or if you had your own idea of what you wanted to do with it, you could develop it entirely on your own. But it's not not that you're influencing it. You you are dictating it. It's quite different. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. wanted to use my hand and raise it up, but I knew I shouldn't. Um, <laughs> this, I can only go this far right now. Okay. <laughs> Bad shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're a dick. You're a dick. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> and I can still whoop your ass. I love you, dude. I love you so much. I love you so much, dude. Okay. Yeah. So, so Cody, has a lot end, more. I got hurt. Yeah. I George has a lot more with the actual experience, obviously. So, uh, but that would be the key differentiator between Mashmaker and uh, George's experience. So, okay, obviously, cool. with Mashmaker, you're not walking away owning barrels <laughs> either. So, you know, right? Yeah, right. That's, yeah, yeah. I, I probably should have prefaced that with, you know, um, the the mash bill portion of it because obviously the the bourbon retreat is a far more larger investment. <laughs> yeah, and you end up with yeah. I think it's I think it's ten barrels, uh, so it's uh, it's pretty cool. Signi yeah. Yeah, it's significant. <laughs> so just a small amount. Just a few bottles out of just that. Bit. So I mean, if you're <laughs> averaging, let's say, two hundred bottles per barrel at ten barrels, that's a. <laughs> 
it's a good amount of whiskey for everybody oh, yeah. out there. Um, I'm also not a mathlete. I'm an athlete. So don't try to have me do math right now because it's going to be wrong. Um, <laughs> even though I do have to do math constantly for work. I was going to say like, just in case there's like a goodwill hunting situation that you got, you're about to bring up Cody. Just don't, don't do it. Dude. No, I mean, you know I mean? can probably do that <laughs> equation in my head, but if you do basic math, I'm what screwed. are we talking about? I have no yeah. idea at this point. It's a, movie, um, it's a movie reference. I want to go into something kind of fun, unique. We do this with every person we have, and we ask a question that's off the wall to bring them off topic to see what the reaction is, and then we'll have fun with it. We ask a squirrel question. <laughs> and we we started this podcast when we took it over 20, 20 years ago. 20 years ago 23 24 year this is episodes like number 25 i think number 25 oh there we go number 25 25 25 years ago yeah, jesus he's about as smart as a squirrel too um so we try to ask as many of these as we can in the unique way as possible so Martin came up with a pretty good question for us, and it's oh, gonna put this on me. No, oh, I'm putting this on you. You, you, sir, wrote this but it, question. But it I does, it, it does, it it does link to the beginning. So here we oh, go. Oh, it does link to the beginning. It ties so, in. Good job. If Casey Jones, not Casey Jones, the distiller, but from the Ninja Turtles, had to fight Ninja Turtles or four mutant squirrel ninjas, which would be harder? What mutant, it. what mutant powers do the squirrels have? Same as the mutant ninja turtles. Same, same, just ninja powers, man. They're ninjas, but squirrels. Yeah, they well, I'm assuming that ability scales with the you know the latent creature that has adopted the mutant abilities. Because if you one remember has a, Bebop uh, and uh, Rocksteady, the other characters, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, Sick reference. Super strong. And uh, what was the other one? He was a, a token Razar. Yeah, hmm. yeah. So like they inherited yeah. super strength. I don't know why the turtles were so BA. They really shouldn't have been based on the I know, right? They really shouldn't have been. So I'm gonna go with the squirrels. Like the squirrels would be deadly. And they I have mean, tails, dude. And they have tails. And, they have and tails. opposable yeah. thumbs. They, mm -hmm. they actually they just, have have, thumbs. they just wouldn't have the shell protection, right? That's all. I yeah, mean, you know, to be best. The best defense is good offense. I mean, and to be fair, there was hey. not there was not a single move there was not a single movie or an episode where the turtles went back into their shell. By the way, true. like they didn't like use that shell for protection. Wait, you know I mean? wasn't hey. in one of the Ninja Turtles uh, like a squirrel or what? what no, the rat happen? Splinter. Splinter was the. Yeah, no, no, there was Splinter. another one. Uh, one he is movies. right. He is right. Yeah, one of them is a squirrel. I think actually in, in the original. Yeah, um, his name was yeah where he gets mutated in the junkyard. His name was Squirrely. Um, but like, no, I don't know. I don't know. If it wasn't named that. No, um, I don't oh. No, I don't think there is. I think I, you're talking about the junkyard in the movie. That yeah. was a that was a snapping turtle and and a, what? Who was he was a rhino? No, not the fucking new movie, you genius. The old movie. Like a wolf or something. He's a wolf. He was a wolf. He was. He was a wolf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a wolf. Oh, he's a retarded looking wolf. Uh, <laughs> not, not even a squirrel, dude. <laughs> no, not even. Yeah. Yeah, right. about it's not even a squirrel, dude. I want to try the single barrel. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm a, you just, look, you, whiskey. You, usually, usually it's me who throws this off. Jesus, Brian. <laughs> like, I have a good memory. It's just gone. Fuck it out, dude. <laughs> that was good. Though. Okay. That was, that was a good... Shall we? Absolutely. Yes, we shall. Can you explain a little bit about this while we try to figure out tasting notes on the notes? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is our original four grain wheat, uh, really unique mash bill. <clears throat> it's a low corn, uh, twenty six and a half percent yellow dent. Same amount bloody butcher corn, uh, probably made famous by Jeff the Creed. Mm. Um, and then uh, thirty five percent soft bread winter wheat and twelve percent malted barley. Now inside baseball. We actually use a uh, four to one mix on our barley. We use a Pilsner malt and uh, caramel 60. I really don't like grass notes in wheat, and we wanted to stay away from that as much as possible. And uh, regular distiller's malt and wheat can make some of that grass note, and so we, we didn't want to use it. I like I like that you don't want that in there. That's mm. my kind of whiskey. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. <laughs> no. I am. 
I am uh, wanting to ask a very specific question right now. Mm -hmm. Ask it. Because famously, famously, um, I'm not a huge fan of Bloody Butcher. Yeah. And I don't know why. I have no idea what it is. Like, there's a note that I get from it that, like, I just can't get along with. But this is, and I'm not just blowing smoke, dude. I promise you. Yeah. I'm not just doing this for the podcast. I actually really like this a lot. This was actually my favorite out of the three. The uh, the note is dirt. It's dirt. It's, it's dirt. Like it's it is not dirt. what I'm getting at all, though. But Buddy it's Butcher just, is really earthy. It's an earthy it's so mold. Earthy. Yeah. It's and you got to so be really, really it, it, careful it, it, with it because it's it can really overpower anything else. So what's the difference there? Like like versus like we'll just use Jeff as a, a thing. Um, like is is like a point of reference. Like is there something different that you guys are doing than like what oh. they do with with with, with Bloody Butcher? Well, I just think again, this is only fifty three percent. Let's say there's less. There's less of there's the less, bloody butcher less, in there yeah. for sure. Okay, yeah. and that might be it. Yeah, I'm not surprised. This is your favorite, Martin. I, I like this one a lot. Like this one is so. You want to know why I say that? Why? This, out of the yeah. three, it's probably the my ball. least favorite. <laughs> the high ball. But no, it's, no, it's the weeded. Just, She's not a big fan of weeded. The, I mean, yeah. usually when. Martin and I are at different sides of it. He's usually yeah. way this way, and I'm all the way the other way. So it's like, to th be th honest, th Adrian, th I'm gonna split you guys in the middle. I'm really like this one, mm -hmm. but also I'm obsessed that with first one, the barrel cut. Yeah, yes. yeah that okay. one's that one's so hands I'm, down I'm, my favorite. I'm it might be one of my favorite. I'm cutting it right in the middle between these two, but. Off this alone, right off the nose, I got fruit roll up, like a cherry fruit roll up, mm -hmm. and then jasmine rice with uh, when, when you wild, dude. I, I'm telling you, man, I've been cooking a lot recently. Apparently, dude, yeah. <laughs> been ordering Thai a lot. I did dude. not. No, see I did not see that coming at all. Yeah, jasmine rice, and then I usually when inside my jasmine rice, I add a little bit of cane sugar. I mm. cut some almonds, place it inside that. I do some uh, onion chives and mix it up. And then I add coconut uh, amino acids to it. That's give it that cool. sweet texture. That's cool. I get it. Um, but I do get this it. is it's very good. This is brilliant. It's very good. It's got an uh, exceptional finish on it. Like that malt just really rounds out the palate. It really that. does. Yeah. And what's really interesting when uh, these barrels were younger, it was mostly like um, herbal notes from the bloody butcher and the wheat and the malt. They all played together to create this like slight honey and black tea flavor. Mm -hmm. And as they've matured, it's gone to the honey still there, still prevalent on my palate, but then it's more like that herbal, slightly very semi sweet. Uh, Louisiana sweet tea kind of thing going on in the mid. Yes. Uh, rolling into that malt. And it's just, it's, it's so well integrated. It's really coming to its own at this mm. uh, age statement. I want to know who does your tasting notes and I want to talk to them. Oh, Cause if God. it's you, we're going to be best friends for a long time because I, I, I have so, be, so many more him. ideas. He's waving. So I know. Waving. That's why I said the <laughs> things that I've said so far. Um, I, I did it's have way more on the palate with this. Like yeah. there's more of that spiciness on the palate as opposed to the the like the Kentucky uh, hug kind yeah. of finish. Mm -hmm. I'm almost what is the back end? It's kind of unique. Have you ever been to Japan or um, any of the islands around Hawaii, Indonesia, anything like no. that? Uh, Europe a few times. Cody, have you been to the South Pacific? I think is what he's trying to ask right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's what <laughs> I, was I was like, trying to be a <laughs> nicer like, way of like, saying it. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Um, it's kind of no, unique. When I was good. in the military, I had the ability to try some unique cuisines from around the yeah. world. Yeah. Um, and then traveling around with my dad when I was younger, I was able to nice try stuff. some stuff that I would never be able to. Um, this. Almost reminds me of a local meal I had in Hawaii with my dad. 
when I was like 15 or 16 years old. Can you describe it? Delicious. So well, what was it? What was the protein? What was it cooked out of? Uh, pork. Mm -hmm. And they did, they didn't do soy. They did a coconut milk and they relaxed it and then they sauteed it. And then they also, after sauteing it, they did a, uh, what's the bowl called? A wok? Yeah. They were okay. walking it yeah. with uh, coconut extract, oh, um, the Hawaiian, um, the banana leaves. So I think it's the banana leaves that you're get, oh, getting yeah. that walk into it that's yeah. coming in that back end. It's just one of those crazy experiences. <laughs> Semi semi fruit, but like herbal at the same time, in a really interesting yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Cool. that's very cool. Yeah. Now so, I really want to cook that, but I don't have a wok, and I'm too cheap uh, to buy one. So, um, and he's never coming in the back end. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sorry, dude. <Wow. laughs> So Cody, anytime you want to take over his spot, <laughs> it's all yours. Sorry, anyway. there was they got too nerdy there for a second. Uh, <laughs> woo. Right. But anyways, um, we have a really we have a, a question that we love, and I'm going to pass over to my my yeah. great friend. What am I? What am I, my heart really is Adrian. Dude. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's ask our favorite question. So we love to ask, and you've already shared so much. A little bit. Um, yeah. So maybe this could be more personal to you um we like to ask everybody what their favorite whiskey memory is it could be from childhood and something that you experienced with a parent or it could be anything <clears throat> yeah i mean i part of me wants to answer that in the context of and i don't want to take away from the question anyway so no, no, it's fine. Please give me a like an olive branch to stand out on here. But mm -hmm. you know, the whiskey's uh, the, the manifestation of the passion. And so really the passion is the business. And a business is willing to put yourself out there to take, I don't know, the slings and arrows and just get into it and roll up your sleeves and struggle with something. And uh, I think my my proudest moment is in that context is just like seeing the growth of the distillery and uh, like the hurdles and challenges that we face in climbing into new plateaus and reaching those peaks and seeing the next mountain range beyond it. Yeah. And like the culture of let's go, like, let's do it, you know? Yeah. Move on. Let's go. That's to, to overcome. Yeah. It, and anything is it's, it's a different kind of feeling for sure. Yeah. On a, on a more personal note, <laughs> share this with a whole lot of people but um i have uh i'll share share it in a kind of interesting way so i'm sure you all know who um uh George, joseph gordon levitt is and oh, yes maybe a little know, right shout out to looper dude that's one of my yeah movies, so huh? it's like i used to have this thing where and i don't know i think probably most people have had this feeling every once in a while but it's like First off, they're gorgeous. I mean, like, just admittedly, objectively so. Thank second, you. Oh, yeah, sorry. Second, they can act their pants <laughs> off, right? But then you find out that both of them can sing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're one, two, maybe, but three? Come on, right? Right. So it's like that. It's so I, I had this real realization uh, the other day. Um, like I, I found my forever person and I'll be 43 at the end of this month. I don't think a lot of people get that. No. So you're not wrong, my friend. I've been really like, realized like that's my one and I'm good with that one. And how this relates to your question is 
anytime I've had even the slightest amount of alcohol, I just reflexively have this thought in my subconscious of how much I love my wife. Ah, oh, I love that. You don't even know how much I love that. I'm such yeah. a sucker for that stuff. Yeah, yeah we're a sucker for love, dude. Yeah, we're <laughs> Some people like love, Hallmark dude. movies. I like real love. So, a Adrian, Adrian and I are sucker for love. Martin is a sucker for something else. Um, <clears throat> Joseph Gordon-Levitt, dude. Thank you know, ten, for sharing that. Ten, we're not making things, light of it. No, no. Ten things I hate about you is like one of my favorite movies, though. Um, so, <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good movie. Um, no, that's beautiful, dude. Honestly, that's so cool. I love it. Um, well, I, I don't have like I was gonna say we don't have like you sort of answered our normal last question, yeah. which was like a distillery equipment rundown, but you sort of already answered it, which I love, and you answered it in our still questions. So like I, I don't have any questions left. If you guys want to keep going, well, I do have a few more questions, and I know oh, Adrian yeah. probably has a question as yeah, well about the, something else that's going to be happening. The big question. I want, I'm really curious about the awards you've won because yeah. I was okay. at the American craft spirit association awards this year and saw mm. what happened and last year. And you guys did an amazing job. Best in show. Yeah. Dude, that's at crazy. The American craft spirit association awards. If people Here's don't know that. what that's that crazy. is, this is <laughs> tremendous. You're put up against thousands of different distilleries. Cause I remember that bottle share. And that hurt. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of whiskey at the very end. And I was able to, I was luckily able to get a tiny, tiny sip of what you guys made. And it was probably some of the best whiskey I've had in a very long time. So that is awesome. Thank you. Thank now, you. Yeah. going off of that, have you guys placed in for next year? And are you guys planning on doing any other awards in the future? Is a really difficult question um, for a lot of reasons about like the status, the state of the industry and where we feel like we're at as a supplier and uh, how we try to like building spirits is very expensive. It's uh, yes. tremendously expensive. So depending on um, which way the wind blows today and how you want to run your cost accounting, it's like, you know, we know how much it costs for us to put up a barrel and um let's just say just for giggles like let's say it's a thousand bucks per barrel right even in our small 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 scale of operation we can do about two and a half a day off one shift okay and if you wanted to double that that could be five a day and you right. could run probably 80 percent of the year and so even just with some simple math, it's like you can spend a lot of money making whiskey if you want to really quick. And so you end up in this space where it's really weird. It's like uh, until you're at a point where your distillate has matured and you're uh, selling off of your at scale production, your margins are in this really weird spot and you're constantly playing this game of, okay, I've cleared a dollar in. Do I invest that in the future and make another barrel or do I keep the operation running today? Right. And so it's this, this game of like liquidity, really. It's not a cash flow game. It's a liquidity game that you're going, constantly playing. So when we think about awards and the state the industry's in, um, I think the ACSA is going to – Brilliant job, um, but there's there's a lot of awards competitions out there, and I, I worry about award insensitivity. Like, mm. oh wow, you won, blah blah blah. Who cares, you know? Uh, so I I think we probably will submit again because we've been very fortunate with that uh, competition, and we've got some really good things to try. But we're we're conservative about entering into a war competitions. That makes sense. No, that makes a ton of sense, especially yeah. someone who runs a whiskey company himself and sees what awards can do and can't do and the longevity of a company based yeah. off of something. But 
I, re- I respect what you guys are doing. That's amazing how you guys are approaching it in the matter of fact way of show stating whiskey is going to speak for itself and the war doesn't have to speak for the whiskey. And by you guys saying this award is this, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Besides that, and I'm going to throw my foot in my mouth just for a second because the ACMAs is phenomenal. Flexibility. And not anymore. I'm kind of broke. Um, <laughs> but with getting something called Best in Show, that's Best crazy. Overall that, that's, Spirit that's there, that's, crazy. that's absolutely insane. That's, crazy. Like, that's thousands of whiskeys and spirits that are roof. presented to these people. Yeah. Um, to these judges, and I'm I'm part of the ACMAs. I'm not a judge, but yeah. I, I see what's submitted. I know what's going on with it. I review everything and talk to everybody else. You guys did a phenomenal job. I commend you guys. You. I know everybody else does that's listening here, and just keep pushing on with everything that you're doing, and let me know when you're pushing out the next stuff so I can try it before it goes there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What a great like what a great segue to say, just send me some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be nice about it. Shut up. <laughs> Jesus. So, here in the next uh, couple weeks, we're going to release mm. a distillery. Um oh, sure. we, oh. You, yeah, we were actually we thought about asking about this, um, but we weren't sure. Yeah, I don't know if you, you saw this. Oh this. yeah, the that. eclipse. That might yeah. be that might be genuinely a gorgeous bottle. That's a gorgeous bottle, man. Yeah, so uh, juice from Kentucky, uh, labels from uh, Nashville, um, glass from Italy. Okay. Well, well, we're going to talk later because I want to know who your glass is. No, now is. I'm really okay. looking up the Google Maps. Yeah. Italy, Italy, glass, <laughs> Italy glass is like way cooler, man. Oh, it's just beautiful. Like, they did just such a good job with it. But that, this is actually our bottle that we use overseas, uh, 700 ml. But uh, on the 26th, we're dropping this. Uh, so you guys like the barrel cut, the double barrel cut. Okay, yeah. This is the single barrel cut variety, but it is Ooh. aged seven years. Horseshit. Yeah. And it's. Is that what you're going to be presenting? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I have to be that person who just fucking throws <laughs> sorry, shit. Dude. Yeah. That was no, wild. Dude. I, now I'm like, how do I. How do, he goes horseshit. I mean, literally, I can drive there in a well, very short on, period on, of time. I will save you a bottle for sure. Oh, oh man, dude. This is, you know, that's, that's good, dude. Damn it. Yeah, I'm sorry, hmm. What am I yeah. doing next weekend? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're doing next weekend. Stop it. Driving to Casey Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, Cody, we're going to end it there. We have I like we went over, so dude. many amazing questions. We've had an, an amazing time. We also don't want to take up because the, the sun was out when we started with yeah, it. Now, was. Now <laughs> it was you know, the sun was out, man. I mean, we have so many more questions and maybe yeah. we'll ask this afterwards where we can do a short tutorial and give it out to people that do something else in the back end for us. But right now, I want to thank you. I know Adrian, Martin, they're probably more ecstatic than I am. Probably not. But I had a what? great time. I, I thought love it. I honestly love, I love this, man. Good. Love the stories. Loved everything that you you're, had to share. So thank you so much. Genuinely, dude, your passion is like, I think the cruel, the cool, cruelest. You cruelest? can feel it. You can fucking <laughs> feel it, man. The coolest. You can feel it. Um, you can just feel like, and I feel like that's like the coolest thing. Like I think we've experienced thus far on this like podcast thing is just like guys like it's just like you can feel the passion, man. And, and, I mean, it, it's the only thing that gets you through it, you know. Oh, hundred percent. Like I'm we're. We were at the distillery uh, seven thirty in the morning, and uh, we don't leave until six six thirty, um, almost every day. So yeah. Do, do you have a moment like when you left? Do you feel like I should have done more? Oh, every day. Every day. It's but it's you can't let it. We are finite creatures in an infinite world, and uh, this is something else I've stolen. But it's just such a great perspective. It's like one day you'll die, but you'll still be getting emails in your inbox. 
<laughs> Cody's like, listen, like, six, it's six o'clock, but you guys are going to get some email. My like people right here. Yeah. This guy's speaking my language. Speaking you language. know who tomorrow is not for promised. Living, man. Yeah. Thank Cody, you. I do the same thing you do in yeah. just a different manner. So, and yeah. I don't, I'm not a partner. I'm All just, right. a, I'm a worker bee. Yeah. <laughs> in the grind, man. It's in it. Yeah. Well, Martin, you have one. I have one job. You have an important job. It's not one job. It's not just an important job. And I don't want to make light of it. But you know what, guys? Honestly, I want to, I, I'm, I'm going to be serious this time. I'm not, I'm not going to go off script. I'm just going to say things. Okay? Say things okay, here we go. Here we go. Say, everybody quiet. Okay. Um, I'm going to say thank you to our sponsor. And I love our sponsor. I want to thank our sponsor so much. It is 10th Mountain Whiskey. You can find them on all social media platforms. It is at 10thwhiskey.com. Guys, go buy them, dude. You know what I mean? Like, go like go check them out. Go go to, there's, how many? Hold on, one, two, three. Four. There's 41 different states through online distribution as well as two, two plus eight, two, two plus eight is 28 states across the country that they're available through regular retail distribution. If you guys have any questions, go to 10th whiskey got Tom, but there's more. You want to know what there's more? Who wants to know what's more? Me. We actually I have, do. you want to, you want to know? Adrian, did you say? Yeah. That? I um, do. <laughs> the only female in here. <laughs> like so. mm -hmm. Um, Guys, use the promo code BWF15 to get 15% off your purchases on uh, uh, everything, honestly. Um, go check them out. Go get your 15% off. Go check them out. It's set up. So, again, BWF15 when you are purchasing through there. Tenthwhiskey.com. Go check them out. Ask questions. Buy their merch, dude. Their shirts are so comfortable, man. Like, I sleep in them. Um, hats, are about, hats, hats are good too. Hats are good too. On point. Yeah. It keeps it keeps bald heads good. So um, well, I wouldn't know, um, but okay. Wow. Dude. Well, besides that, Cody, <laughs> thank you because your merch is going to be also linked in this podcast. Yeah, we'll also link all your stuff too. Dude. Yeah, thank yeah. you for coming on. We really appreciate everything that you've done, especially providing these amazing bottles. And I oh, guarantee you amazing. tonight. We're, we, normally after this, we jump on an Instagram live. We talk to everybody. We try to bring people on to give them more excitement and realism on everything that they do. But the last thing I'm going to say is everybody like and subscribe to yes, BWF. Please. But not, in the, not only us. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Casey Jones Distillery. Mm -hmm. They are going to be linked in the bio below or mm -hmm. in any – where you're listening, just go in, press the button, press like, press subscribe. Awesome, Make sure Cody is getting the love that he needs for doing all this marketing and all. Not even needs, deserves, dude. Oh, it's a hundred percent deserves from everything that he's doing, especially yeah. providing us these amazing samples, which were the samples, history, by the way. I, I hope uh, no, dude, I these start. aren't these aren't these aren't samples, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> these are big ass samples. It's a big yeah, fucking sample, dude. Holy crap. <laughs> it's 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 appreciated and we I'll love be you sharing. And we love the Don't and we love worry. the whiskey, I'll man. be sharing yeah. with other individuals for Fantastic. sure. Fantastic. All right, guys. Yeah. I think that's that time of the night or day, wherever you're at. Remember, a bourbon with friends can change the world, everybody. Have a great day or night. Drink responsibly. Thanks, y'all. Yes. Drink responsibly. Cheers, guys. Cheers. That's it for this episode of Bourbon with Friends. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. While you're at it, leave us a review to make it easier for others to find the show. You can also check us out on Instagram at BWF Podcast. Thanks for listening.